we have with us professor sabu thomas vice chancellor mahatma gandhi university dr anita jose principal assumption college dr agnes jose principal bk college amalagiri father chinju tom library assumption college changanasheri sandhya and jindo from lower and ed along with the participants it's a pleasure to have you all here for the inaugural session of the 12 day national workshop on trends in books and journal publishing let me invite father tinju tom librarian archbishop kavuga to central library assumption college for the welcome address good evening all uh, uh, we the archbishop kavuga central library of uh, assumption college uh, and uh, research and postgraduate department of economics uh, bishop kuriyala seri college for women amalagiri lower and ed research associates gladly uh, present the 12 days national online workshop on trends in books and uh, journal publishing uh, many of us consider the pandemic uh, as a curse uh, but with all its illness it has it's, uh, it has brought some uh, blessings as well uh, one of such is uh, uh, it has it has made us tech savvy and it has come to the extent of uh, self publishing of books many Uh, including the students have started uh, publishing books uh, through self publishing platforms uh, so in this juncture we thought of uh, uh, letting all know of the current trends in uh, books and journal publishing and we hope that all the participants will benefit from this workshop uh, in its fullness uh, today at this moment we have with us our honorable vice chancellor professor dr sabu thomas the great academician and uh, world renowned scientist in the field of uh, nanotechnology Uh, we are proud to have him as a vice chancellor of our university and today we are really honored to have him amidst us to inaugurate this session so it's a great privilege for me to introduce you and i most cordially welcome uh, to you uh, i most cordially welcome you to this inaugural session in the name of both the colleges and uh, lower and ed research associates welcome sir we have the principals of both assumption college and uh, bk college with us yeah. dr anita jose and dr agnes jose uh, they are the guiding lights of our colleges uh, dr anita will be presiding of the session and dr agnes will give the felicitation uh, with all respect i welcome both the principals dr anita jose and dr agnes jose uh, the thank you the economics department of uh, bk college amalagiri was uh, instrumental in arranging and uh, coordinating this workshop uh, the head of the department simadi uh, dia philip this a special appreciation in this concern they have uh, uh, consented to collaborate with us uh, in this program madam i welcome you to this session uh, dr jasimuddin a dear colleague of mine uh, is a resource coordinator and uh, a uh, real mastermind uh, behind this workshop uh, sir with uh, with all uh, with a heart filled with gratitude i welcome you most cordially uh, to this inaugural session uh, the lower and ed research associates has become a real uh, aid to all the librarians and colleges who wish to conduct webinars and programs of this type uh, especially during the pandemic and uh, in the, in, the in this continuing days Uh, Sri Jindo Michael, uh, director, and uh, Sri Madhi uh, Sandhya Sebastian, the managing director, uh, they are very generous in extending their help and support uh, to anyone at any time uh, to conduct the programs. I gladly welcome both Sri Jindo and Sri Madhi Sandhya to this session. Uh, we are really blessed to have an erudite community of participants with us uh, for the coming 12 days. Uh, we have around uh, 228 participants um, and uh, i assure you all the support from outside in this learning process and i most cordially welcome you all to this 12 days long journey and once i once again welcome you all to this function i remain thank you thank you very much thank you father and of course the company college has served as a hub for all scholars in terms of training programs and workshops with the zeal and commitment dr anida jose principal of assumption college has always been with us to materialize the workshop i invite you now for the presidential address thank you very much honorable vice chancellor professor dr sabu thomas sir dr agnes jose principal bk college amlagiri 
Srimadhi Dia Philip, Head of the Department of Economics, BK College, Amalagiri. Uh, Reverend Father Tinju Tom, Librarian, Assumption College, Autonomous, Changnasheri. Ms. Sandhya, Mrs., Mr. Jindo Michael, and uh, Mr. Jasmudi. I feel really privileged and I acknowledge the presence of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Sabu Thomas, sir. He's our chief guest today and the apt person who is also the king of publishing. It's a great pleasure for Assumption College to associate once again with Lauren Ed Research Associates. And this is the sixth time the college is collaborating with Lauren Ed Research Associates. I'm also happy that this time uh, we also could associate with Bishop Kuryalashiri College for Women, Amalagiri in organizing this 12-day uh, national online workshop on trends in book and journal publishing. We have heard the terminology publish or perish. And publishing our research findings and creating uh, new knowledge and being partakers of creating new knowledge and sharing knowledge is to become a habit for researchers. Without publications, <clears throat> and collaborations, and nobody in the educational world can survive. In this context, the ethics in publishing is also very important. All of us are aware about it. Okay, uh, and uh, I would like to uh, especially uh, acknowledge uh, the presence once again about Sabu sir, who is going to enrich us with this immense experience in book and journal publishing. And sir will give us an insight on how to publish in high impact journals. Thank you, sir, for your concern and your presence. I also appreciate the initiative taken in this regard by Archbishop Kaugat Central Library, Assumption College Autonomous Changnasheri, especially our librarian, Reverend Father Tinju Tom, and the Department of Economics, BK College, Amlagiri. Uh, thank you, Dr. Agnes Jos, a principal of uh, BK College, and also uh, Ms. Dia Philip, uh, the uh, head of the department of uh, the Department of Economics. I especially uh, place on record and acknowledge the support given by Lauren Ed Research Associates, and uh, uh, special thanks to uh, Ms. Sandhya, Mr. Jindo Michael, and also a thanks to Mr. Uh, Jasimuddin for your great support. It's also promising that an array of eminent uh, resource persons are going to enrich this workshop in the coming days. Uh, special, uh, especially an acknowledging a Lorraine Dead Research Associates once again for their support. So concluding now with warm wishes, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you for being here and for promoting words. We are eagerly waiting to listen to Dr. Sabu Thomas, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University. This career graph speaks for itself. I welcome Professor Sabu Thomas, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mahatma Gandhi University for the keynote address and introduce us to the world of publication. Very good evening to all of you. Dr. Anita Jones. Dr. Agnes Jones, Dr. Tinju Tom, all my colleagues, friends. I'm extremely delighted to be part of you today. Congratulate both the colleges in organizing such an exciting workshop on publishing. Publishing has become extremely important. Probably you all know that. Scholars are always assessed in terms of uh, their publications. Publications, if I make it very specifically, the uh, high impact uh, journal publications, books, patents, and how many patents have been transferred to technology. These are the important points by which usually uh, scholars are. Uh, Rank. Probably you all know that um, we have uh, several organizations ranking colleges and universities. 
if you look at any ranking, whether it is NARF or NAC or Times ranking or Shanghai ranking or QS ranking, you all will find that publications play a very important role. When you again, when you look at the publications, they will look at the impact factor journal. They will look at your uh, citations. They will look at your H index. They will also look at your patents. So these are becoming increasingly important. Probably we all know that now the funding from the government of India is based on our ranking in NARF and NAC. My university, probably some of you know that my university got 50 crores of funding from MHRD, so called ROSA funding, because of the, our high ranking in NARF. So, dear colleagues, we all have to publish in high ranking journals. We all have to build new knowledge, and this new knowledge have to be spread across the globe through publications. I, I would always recommend you to publish in good journal. With all your permission, I declare that the 12 days workshop on publishing has been opened, inaugurated. Wish you all the best. Dear colleagues, what I'm going to talk today is uh, how to can I can I show my slide? I have a few slides that could be better if I if you permit me to show my slide. Can I show my slide? Can you give me permission? Yes. Yes, nice. Perfect. In there slide, in there. No. In there. And there, sweet. And there. 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 That's the title of my presentation today. I'm going to my next slide. The important points I wanted to important points I wanted to talk today is are mentioned in this key point slide. The first one is frontier areas of interest. If you want to really publish in a high impact journal, you have to really work on frontier areas of interest. You look at the publication track record of Professor Sienna Rao. Professor Rao was active 20 years ago, 30 years ago on superconductivity. That was a frontier area of research. If you look at the last uh, 15 years, Professor Rao is focusing more on nanoscience. Nanoscience has become so important. So, dear colleagues, whatever be your domain, whether it is economics or chemistry or uh, physics or biological sciences, you have to take the right topic, very important. And the problem should be very good, very good research problem. You may have to do a very good survey of your literature, understand the gap area. And you have to be very specific in which area you have to make new contributions. Once you understand that, you have to make systematic experimentation. You, if, you, if you are an experimentalist, uh, you have to do multiple experiments using modern techniques. That is why the modern research demands sophisticated instrumentation facility. Once you have all the results, uh, in your computer, then you have to really write a very good paper. The abstract, introduction, results, discussion. Uh, you have to have nice graphical work, nice cartoons. So I will discuss all these points one by one in the coming slides. 
look at the frontier areas of interest good research problem let us survey gap area that's very important you have to read quite a lot then only you can understand the gap area so whenever i get a new phd student i always ask the phd student to read and read and read look at the literature very carefully and identify a research problem in that area that is extremely important you see once you do all this uh, the literature survey gap area if you are doing experiments you have to do very systematic experimentation some of my colleagues are doing theory they don't do any experiment but they do a lot of calculations in theory some of my, some of my colleagues use dft calculations some of my colleagues do monte carlo simulation so they don't do any experiment but they do uh, a lot of theory but those who do experimentation i request all of all of you to do very systematic experimentation work and those who do i mean social science research some of you might be doing primary data collection some of you might be doing second data collection but do all these collections very carefully meticulously use statistical tools everywhere and those who do a lot of experiments in uh, in science subjects please use multiple modern techniques they are all very very important so once you do this very carefully you have your data in your computer or in your book that's why i mentioned in this slide getting ready with the data you once you do systematically all this work very neatly then you have a lot of data you have to make first draft of the paper what could be the structure of a scientific paper i'm going to talk about that once the paper is ready then you have to select a very good journal you submit the paper to a journal now the submission is always online very often the paper could be rejected the paper could be uh, uh, you know look at uh, the rejection rate my own the, the journal i am the editor nano structures and nano optic by elsevier the rejection rate is 80% that means if you get 100 papers eight are rejected so rejection is very common in all the journals now so don't get disappointed once your article is rejected if it is rejected you know what you have to do is you revise it properly then you submit to annual journal only after proper uh, revision sometimes your paper could be accepted without any changes that i would say the possibility is 5% or 2% now more than that very often your paper is accepted with a major revision or minor revision these are the possibilities once a paper is accepted then you have to be very careful about the galley proof that is the final chance to make corrections so these are the process of publication now once you have the, all the data there is social science there it is science where it is theoretical work i have mentioned a point here gather all important data analyze the data load the data in the form of graphs and tables you have to use statistical tools when you play with the data that's very important so i request all my colleagues use statistical tools Uh, the average the standard deviation everything should be indicated in your tables and plots and you have to organize the results in a very logical fashion the order of your presentation and when you submit a paper to a journal my suggestion is always limit the total number of figures very close to 6 to 8 you know why because journals have space limitation suppose if you send a paper with 20 25 figures and tables the paper is likely to be rejected so please read the regulations of the journal 
understand it their value. Then you sum it. If you have a lot of figures and tables, give them as supporting information. Discuss the data very well. A student should discuss with the data of the supervisor. Supervisor should analyze the data very carefully. These are quite important point. When you make the first draft of the paper, you have to pinpoint two or three important findings. That's very important. What are, what are the major findings of the paper? That should be the central theme of the article. Always the reviewer will look for what is the contribution of this paper? What is the main contribution? So you have to focus on the central theme mm -hmm. that you have to put in the abstract. The writing style should be good. All the figures, schemes, and tables should be in a professional manner. And accuracy in error bars are very important. Sometimes, you know, when I get some data for, uh, when I review some papers, some others give uh, significant digits, error bar. You know, for example, 0 0.0001, 0 0.001000, such significant digits have to be given very, very carefully. You may not get that much of accuracy. That's a very important point in science subjects. Dear colleagues, now I'm going to talk about the structure of a scientific paper. The first one is title. Second one is abstract. Any paper, if you look at you, there is a title, the abstract. Table of content now we have to present in the form of a cartoon, graphic. All journals ask for a beautiful cartoon to represent table of content. Then you have all science subject, you have experimental section. When you talk about the results, then you discuss. That's a very important part. The discussion should be very strong. Then conclusion, concluding remarks. And many others, what they do, conclusion is a replica of abstract. Never do that. And we have to acknowledge all the people funding agency, your colleagues, those who supported you. And references, you cannot miss key references in a paper, very important. And also more of recent references. And you can give supporting information. Suppose you have lots of figures and tables. These excess figures and tables could be given as supporting information. Dear colleagues, I'm going to talk about the title. That's very, very important. I would say that it should be very simple, attractive, concise. Don't give very long title. Don't give acronyms in the title. You have to expand everything. I would say avoid investigation, study, novel, facile, etc. Such terms better to avoid. And use good English. I can give you an uh, example. You see how graphene is cut up upon oxidation. How is graphene cut upon oxidation? Look at the first one is wrong grammatically, the second one is correct. So please see that. So, you know, in, in some articles, I find the title is wrong wrongly organized title. Coming to the abstract, abstract is very, very important. You know, some reviewers, you know what they do? They only read the abstract. And if the abstract is not very exciting, they will reject. So we have to give lots of interest to abstract. Abstract should have major findings. That's what I mentioned, the major findings in red. 
A flash should attract the reviewer. A flash should attract the readers. A flash should be creative. A flash uh, should generate curiosity among readers. And it should be informative, it should be simple to understand. So if your abstract is poor, your paper is likely to reject. Another important thing is the cartoon theme of content graphics. Theme of content graphics. That's very important. The graphics. Science paper graphics are very, very important. You you read any paper in nature or science or beautiful cartoons you can give. Cartoon should reflect the central theme of the paper. I remember I had a collaborator in Germany, his name is Karga Coxes. And a couple of my students did postdocs with him. And my students told me. It's very difficult to please Professor Carver Cox's with respect to cartoons. He really needs need a very nice cartoons. He said, you know, you always say cartoon should uh, reflect the central theme of the paper. So I made something about the cartoon, the graphic. The graphic should capture the reader's attention. In agreement with the manuscript title. So please give extra care about the graphic and cartoon. I mentioned a few points about graphic should be simple, informative, use of color is encouraged. Graphic must be original. Some people, you know, what they do, they copy graphics from internet. Never do that. Graphic should be should be a novel graphic should be novel so that's a very important point graphic should be original and novel otherwise uh, uh, the paper could be rejected that's very important Sorry, my uh, my video was off. Now my colleagues uh, put it on. I'm going to talk about the introduction. You see, abstract, after abstract, or for there is TOC diagram, then introduction comes. Dear colleagues, don't write too much of introduction because introduction should be concise. I would say maximum two pages. Because all the journals have page limitation. American Chemical Society, Royal Society of Chemistry, all these journals have page limitation. So don't write big introduction. Introduction should give a very nice uh, uh, general background of the topic. Maybe two, three paragraphs. The end of introduction should focus on what are the important gap areas coming to experimental the experimental part you can divide into materials methods and characterization measurement data analysis what you really do what sort of experiments you do research and discussion there are two ways people do in science uh, publication some people uh, we'll show results first and then discussion. I remember my North American advisor. I spent two years in North America. My North American advisor, when I went there, he always advised me separate both results, maybe one page, then dis discussion should be four or five pages. See, his, his, his attitude was, uh, was very interesting. So I learned from him. So I now, most of the papers I I try to divide results first in discussion. And you have to discuss your results beautifully. That's very, very important. Res discussion make your paper very strong.
And when you discuss a paper, you have to keep some order. All the figures and tables should be discussed in order fashion. And I request all of you to avoid excessive presentation of data. Some people will make the paper very uninteresting because they repeat, they repeat many sentences. So I would say avoid excessive presentation of data. And whenever you make it a discussion, especially scientific paper, it's always nice to compare or experiment with theoretical prediction. But again, give a lot of values for your paper. Coming to conclusion, conclusion should be something different what you wrote already. Many conclusions, you know what people do, they repeat the abstract in a different fashion. Don't do that. I remember my North American uh, collaborator always ask, always tell me, Sabu, discuss and conclude. That was his policy. I think that's very important. I made a very important statement here. Do not rewrite the abstract in conclusion. Acknowledgement is very important. You have to acknowledge all your colleagues, friends who supported you in your work. You have to acknowledge your funding agency. I remember my PhD students sometimes forget the funding agency. My project, uh, research is very much supported by DST, CSAR, DBT. And if, if, if DST is not able to find out the acknowledgement, they will be very unhappy. And references, you have to follow the, the pattern of the journal. It could be a note. Uh, you know, different journals have different styles. You have to follow the style very meticulously. And when you cite references, don't cite so many references, 50 or 60. No, maybe 20, 25 references, fine. But never miss any key references. That's very important. Of course, you have to give supporting information. Suppose the paper is very big, you have lots of figures. You give them, you give the uh, editor a lot of supporting information. So this is the way you have to write a paper. I wanted to bring you a very important point. When you write a paper, avoid plagiarism. Very important. You see, I am. I'm the editor of nanostructures and nano objects. I'll save you. Every month I get very close to 100 articles to be published from all over the world. Dear colleagues, I'm telling you the truth. 60% of the papers I receive are plagiarized. You know what I do? When I get this paper, I run this paper through the Elsevier software. 60% of the papers have more than 30%, more than 25% plagiarism. You know what we do? Immediate rejection. The paper is rejected. So what is plagiarism? The practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one song. It is a theft. It's a piracy. It's a stealing. So dear colleagues, never copy somebody's work. I see plagiarism very commonly in thesis also. Introduction of many PhD thesis I find high level of plagiarism. So please advise your research scholars, read something, understand the subject and write in your language. Avoid plagiarism, avoid the cut and paste technique. Now I'm going to talk to you. Once your paper is ready, you have to select the right journal. That's very important. Every journal has a focal theme. For example, the journal I am the editor is nanostructures and nano objects. They we focus only on nanomaterials. Other papers we not accept. So you have to really find out a journal. There's a strong interest in your subject. 
that's extremely important you can discuss with your colleagues friends with your advisor with your professor and find the best channel and try to send it again i always advise my co-workers and friends and colleagues try to publish in high impact journal there's always a tendency now people want to publish in very poor quality journals and predatory journals have become very common now I remember 10 years ago, I was in Nepal. The Telwal Academy of Sciences organized a big conference in Nepal, and I was invited to give a talk on predatory journals. Predatory journals mean journal, they work on commercial profits. Their interest is only profit, not science. So they lure you, please submit your paper, we will publish you in the next day. To pay us 10,000, 20,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees. But, dear colleagues, there are very high, nice journals. They are also open access, but you have to pay. But you have to really differentiate what's a predatory journal. So, never publish in predatory journal, publish in very high standard journal. Whatever be your subject economics, social science, or political science, history. Chemistry, physics, biological sciences, publishing, computer. That will give you lots of reputation. Whenever you publish, whenever you take a journal, dear colleagues, look at the impact factor. So I have a, I, I've shown here how impact factor is calculated. Impact factor of a journal in 2008 means 2006, 2007 citations appeared in 2008 divide by number of papers published in 2006 and 2007 this is the way in that fact is calculated so you can easily find out the impact factor of the journal nowadays you know to get impact factor you may have to wait for two three years the impact factor. I have mentioned the impact factor of some of the important journals, Angawanda Chemistry, Nano Letters, Advanced Materials. The impact factors have gone up now. So please look at the impact factor of various journals. My own area of science, uh, impact factor of some of the nice channels, progress in polymer science, polymer reviews, macromolecules, biomacromolecules. These are all top journals in macromolecular science. Once you identify the journal, submit the paper to the editor in the online mode. In online mode. And uh, suppose you have multiple authors, get agreement from all the others from different institutes sometimes you know you submit a paper without agreement from the courses so all the courses have to see the journal you see the article and you need to have the agreement because uh, being the editor i have lots of difficult times because i get a paper after the paper is published, a co-author say, I never knew about this paper, this is published. So now all the journals have a good mechanism. Once the paper is published, once the paper is uh, received by us, we send a communication to all the co that this paper has been received with you as a co -author. If you have any objection, please let us know. So see that if you have many multiple orders, please get the approval from all the orders before submission. As I mentioned to you earlier, when you submit a paper to a journal, you may have to wait for maybe three, four months, or two months, sometimes six months, depending upon the journal's activity, reputation, nature of review waste, the uh, period of review time varies. So as I mentioned earlier, there could be complete rejection, there could be major revision, minor revision, 
a complete acceptance. So once your paper is accepted, then they will send you the galley proof. But before that, suppose if your paper can also come on a on a on a revision. Usually, you know, manuscripts are re reviewed by two, three, two or three or four reviewers. And please remember the fact that reviewers always point out your deficiency suggestions to improve the scientific content. So I request to read the comments carefully and revise it. You know, some people what they do is a paper is rejected from a journal. Without any modification, what they do, they will send you another job. Don't do it. If you get reasonably good comments, revise it properly and then do something. Some others, you know, some others are disappointed once their paper is rejected. My suggestion is don't get disappointed. No. Work on their comments, improve the quality of the paper. And try to resubmit. Once your paper is accepted in a journal, you get the galley proof, and the galley proof, the proof has to be collect, corrected very carefully because this is the last chance to make final corrections. I made a special slide for you what to do if a paper, paper gets rejected. My suggestion is do not get discouraged. Read editorial and review comments and discuss with your advisors, students, and collaborators. And try to revise it. I have a few points. I mentioned here do not turn around and submit the paper to Anandya. It's very important. Many people do that. They don't do much of modification, but find another journal and submit it. Read carefully the comments and find ways to improve the scientific quality of the paper. Very important. So, dear colleagues, don't get disappointed. If the paper is rejected, please revise it properly, improve the quality of the paper, and be summit. I made another slide. What to avoid? Data without scientific discussion. Very important. If you have a lot of data, but if the discussion is poor, the paper could be rejected. Please avoid routine synthesis, routine characterization, you know. Always think of something novel, new, very, very important. When you write a paper, I, I suggest you know you should you use good English. Very important. English drama should be good. Even your paper could be corrected by an English teacher. English is not the native language of India. So please get it corrected from a person who is good in English. Very often, if your English is very bad, that the reviewers are not able to understand your paper, then the paper could be rejected. And dear colleagues, American Chemical Society, Royal Society of Chemistry, they all have language support system. But you have to pay a little bit of money. Elsevier has a language support system. If you pay a little bit of money to Elsevier, they will make your paper good in language. I wanted to tell you 10 characteristics of an incredibly dull paper, bad paper. Avoid focus. Some papers have no focus at all. Some papers have no originality. Some papers are extremely lengthy. 
25, 50 pages. Some papers have no illustrations. Some papers have no reasoning, no discussion. Some papers use abbreviation all over the paper and people we may not understand. Some papers talk only statistics. They don't, they don't really discuss the data. They talk only statistics. You may understand. You know, some of this, what they do, every sentence is supported by a reference. That's again a very wrong style. So these are the 10 characteristics of, a, of an incredibly dull paper. Dear colleague, this is my last slide. Do not ever give up. That's my advice. You will have to publish. The paper will be rejected, don't get disappointed. Try to publish. It's a way of disseminating the knowledge for society. And my, my, my advice to all my science colleagues, engineering colleagues who are doing, or who are doing theory work, if you get something interesting in your laboratory, don't publish immediately. You go for a patent. Now patenting is very fast. After patenting, if you publish in a very good journal, high impact journal, don't stop there. Then you should try to incubate your patents. Again, don't stop there. You make a startup company. And you know the startups are the engines for wealth, employment, development. I remember 15 years ago, I had visited from the University of Akron. A brilliant polymer chemist came to MGU. You know, what was his advice? His name is Professor Joseph Kennedy. He's now 90 plus, but still he's a very active man. His advice was, invent. If you invent something in the laboratory, invent, patent, publish. Incubate, develop into a startup company, and make products for a society, new products, marketable products. That will greatly contribute to national development. That will benefit our society. I remember. Uh, a few years ago, I happened to meet the Stanford University president. And Stanford University president told me, in 1800, Stanford University was nowhere, not ranked by any ranking companies. He said that he used the word secondary engineering college. You see, now you can all look at the internet where Stanford stands. Stanford is always within five in world ranking. You look at chemistry, physics, biological sciences, computer sciences, you can take any subject, Stanford is top there. I asked the president, what's the secret of Stanford? You know what he said? The secret of Stanford is startup companies. Silicon Valley in the United States is the product of Stanford. Therefore, colleagues, we all should publish very good quality papers. And some of our findings should be translated into products, marketable products for the humanity. Thank you very much. And if you need any support for publication or patenting or translation, please keep in touch with me. I'll be very happy to support you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Do we have time for an interaction? Yes, yes, yes. Please. If participants have any doubt, please I may interact with uh, this person.
Hello, sir. Uh, this is uh, Godwin. <clears throat> I'm from Toronto Government Women's College. Sir, uh, can you briefly tell me uh, the primary distinction between, you know, the the, the a high quality paper of a say a, a physical sciences journal and a social science, you know, uh, journal or an article? You see, my suggestion is any article that should create new knowledge. Whether it is science or social science, any article if you publish, that should have some sort of gap area. It should bring new knowledge. So if it is science, I would definitely say uh, new discovery should be created. New knowledge should be created. I don't see any demarcation between science and social science. Whatever will be the field, we have to identify the gap area and new knowledge has to be created. That paper has value. I always my, advise my students, whether it's social science or science or engineering or medical science, find out the problem, define the problem, attack the problem. I don't see any difference between science and social science. Okay, thank you so much. Any question from the part of the participants? Probably they all must be tired in the in the evening. It must be. <laughs> Hello, sir. Yes, sir. I'm Sarana Kumar calling uh, from Bangalore. Yes. So normal, as you pointed out, we have to look for high impact journal. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a lot of time to get the results, sir. What happened to my papers like that? So that uh, sometimes no, we feel that is a, a longer time period to wait. So how, to, uh, so how we can come across all those things, sir, that's from your point of view. Yeah, this is a problem. Uh, I remember my colleague in the School of Mathematical Sciences said uh, he sent a paper and uh, he had to wait for uh, six, seven months. Then he sent several uh, reminders. You know, some of the journals are uh, quite slow. Now, you see, now things are changing rapidly. Look at the American Chemical Society journals, very fast. Within, within, a, within a month, you will get a reply. I get a lot of papers to review. And the review, the editors push me. They say, if you cannot review the paper within a week, say no. So now things are changing. Things are changing now. In the past, it used to take a lot of time. Look at Royal Society Chemistry, uh, all this nature. They're all quite fast now, thanks to uh, digital technology. So, I mean, there is dramatic change taking place. All journals now, and publishing become very, very competitive now. So, things are changing quite a lot because of digital technology. The only advice is if the journal is extremely slow, withdraw the paper and try to send another journal. If they're very, very slow. That's the only advice I can make. You're right. Thank it you. be a common. It would be a case sometimes, yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. This is Aman from Central This is Aman from Central Central University of Kerala. Sir, what is your yes. advice for art students? The students, my advice to student is try to publish in very good journals. Never publish in predatory journals. Never publish in low quality journals. If you again, you know, some students, they say, you know, this, this journal is listed in a DGC list, care list. But try to publish in high impact journal. That's my advice. Do good quality science. Sir, is there any and difference for student, students of arts and students of science? Is there any difference? You know, the difference I find is 
see the difference I find is several uh, social science uh, uh, students always complain to me that they are not able to look at the impact factor of the other. Uh, you know, it's for example, you know, economic and political weekly, a very nice uh, uh, publishing from India, but doesn't have an impact factor. My social science colleagues might know EPW is considered to be a very good uh, journal, but doesn't have impact factor. So, uh, you know, impact factor eventually will uh, uh, will uh, will be attained by all the social science journals. There's a tribe. Several social science journals abroad have impact factor, but Indian many social science journals do not have impact factor. They have to apply for the impact factor. So this is one issue. And also, you see, there are some uh, areas, for example, Malayalam. I have a, a complaint from my colleagues because Malayalam, they don't have any good journals, uh, reasonably good journals. They are not cited in the EGC. So there are some issues, but I think these issues could be sorted out. We are also thinking of um, doing something in, in this regard, you know, to look at the citations of uh, Malayalam publications in Kerala. So we are working with uh, uh, our sister universities to work jointly to look at the citations of all the Malayalam writings. But in general, social science, uh, you know, people are not that concerned with the H index or uh, citations or impact factor. But science journals, we always look at the impact factor, citations, H index, etc. You are right. But things will change. So, thank you, sir. Yeah. There is a question in the comment box. Yeah. So the question is this: Which is better, journal article or creative writing? You see, creative writing is one way of uh, uh, creating new knowledge. But I would say. Uh, both are quite good, but I would say science, uh, high impact journal publication is always good in science. Creative writing, you can have monograph, you can have books. But you know, if you if you write an article in a good journal, that will be read quite widely, other than a monograph or a book. Because people always look at uh, publications. That will reach much faster to society, the general public, to the scientific community, I would say. Thank you, sir. Professor Brunin, closer. Yeah. Sir, I have a question, sir. Uh, sir uh, yeah. How do you think about uh, publishing in the journals that are being uh, run by the educational institutions? Like universities, so they are coming with the journals, from, sir. So will it be equal my, to the... My, my suggestion is the universities and colleges should not run scientific publications. Okay. I, let me advise. I looked at many publications. You see, I've, I, I, I sit for interviews. Um, in, I'll tell you an example. I, I went for an interview in the other state. I was interview for a professor position, senior professor. You know, now University Finance Commission gives senior professor. You know, senior professor should have 10 publications. You know what the professors, uh, I mean, uh, wrote to me? Their university is having a publication. And uh, they have uh, shown me ISBN number and everything. But I looked at the, you know, they, they, this university is publishing this. Well, majority of his publications are in the journal published by the university. Uh, my suggestion is, Universities and colleges should not run publications. We cannot keep up the quality, number one. If at all you are running a journal by a college or a university, I would strongly recommend you should not publish in that journal. The colleagues from that college or university should not publish in that journal. You should publish elsewhere. So I strongly discourage starting new journals by colleges or universities, because I know many journals 
run by colleges and universities are of very low quality. Many of them do not have impact factor. So I strongly discourage chemistry. You have thousands of excellent journals, physics, biological sciences, computer sciences. We have really good journals, social science, economics. We have excellent journals. But areas like Malayalam, Sanskrit, probably if you start a journal, if you give very high standard, it is good. That's my advice. Thank you, Professor. Uh, one more uh, question, Professor. So in that case, what are the parameters we are supposed to have to uh, I mean, finalize their journal to be published? So because of whether it should be indexed or should be concentrated in the Scopus coverage or uh, listed in the UGC CAT journals or uh, without these things are also, there may be possibility you no know, process. You so see, what, uh, whenever you publish something in any, any area, mm -hmm. you should look at which are the best journals in the area. Okay. I said, these are the best journals in the area. That's very important. You look at the care list of UGC. UGC has listed all the important journals. Hmm. Top journals. Look at all ACS journals are listed in UGC. All lots of chemistry journals are listed in UGC. You know? So UGC has listed all the top journals in the world, and they are always updating. Okay. I'm also partly associated with them. Okay. But predatory journals, you know what they do? They somehow bribe and try to get into the list. So uh, my advice is never publish in a low quality journal, even if it is in the UGC list. A lot of UGC listed journals are poor quality. So please advise in high quality. My advice is publish in high quality journals. Oh, uh, this is the, how how we can find it, whether it is a quality or uh, look at the impact quality. factor. Look at the impact factor. You look at all the society. Ah, impact factor is the best way. So no, even some predatory journals they are claiming high impact factors, sir. No, no, no. So, see, that's all. You see, these are all predatory journals. Mm -hmm. Predatory journals, you have to understand. You know, you look at the website. Predatory journals do not have any good editorial board. Okay. Predatory journals do not have any international review process. Okay. They always send many mails to you. You see, this back factory is 10, publish it. Uh, we will give you uh, one week time, you can publish. You can identify such journals. Okay. That person is only money. Okay. And unfortunately, dear colleagues, you know, the position of India in terms of predatory journals, number two. Number one is United States. Number two is India. Number three is China. We are we are even overtaken China in terms of predatory journals. Hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Sir, I have got one doubt, sir. I'm Nisha yes. from Collingeri. Yes. Uh, sir, now it's permitted. No, that we can publish in interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary journals in UGC care list. I'm doing yes. uh, research in management, sir. So should yeah. we stick to our own subject or can we publish in any uh, other journal? You can publish in, I would say, if you are uh, if you are uh, submitted interdisciplinary, you can submit to many interdisciplinary journals of high standard. Yeah. Definitely. Why not? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I would always recommend interdisciplinary approach. Our research has to be interdisciplinary, which I forgot to tell you in the beginning. Our research topic has to be interdisciplinary. You know, that's very important. Now we look at you know look at nano science interdisciplinary. Being a, if you want to become a good nano scientist, you have you should know chemistry, you should know physics, you should know biological sciences, you should know mathematical sciences. Then only you can become a good uh, uh, nano scientist. So the research is becoming more and more interdisciplinary now. Look at the Nobel uh, Nobel Prize winners. Very often, the the physics Nobel Prize is uh, is given to discovery in biological. Uh, I mean, um, uh, discoveries. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, one more uh, a small doubt, sir. You said no, sir. In the title, we should not use to study to investigate. So, what are the other terminologies uh, we yeah, could study, use? Study, investigate, facile are all uh, all routine uh, way. Okay. You should change it. You should change into a very nice way whether the whole content would be understood from the, you know, you can frame the title based on the new finding. 
Okay. Okay. So yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Thank you, sir. sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Myself, yes. Dr. Sujna from Central Russia's College Editor. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Sir, I had a doubt. Uh, we have seen uh, this index Copernicus, H index, Scopus index, such terms. Are they related to impact factor in any way? You see, if you look at the H index, H index is always related to, not really to the impact factor of the animal. Suppose your H index is, for example, my H index is now 122. 122 is my H index. What does it mean? It means that 122 publications of mine has been cited at least 122 times. If your H index is 5, that indicates that your five publications have been cited at least five times. Okay. So H index doesn't have any correlation with impact factor of H index strongly depends on your citation and your number of publication. So senior scholars, senior scholars would be easily judged from the H index. If you're a senior scholar, then you should have a good number of publications. If you're a senior scholar, you will get a lot of citations. So quality of a, a researcher, a senior researcher, could be easily understood from the H index. H index is not related to the impact factor of the journal. H index depends on the, the number of citations and the number of publications. If your publication is low, suppose publication is only 10, your H index cannot go beyond 10. You get me? Okay. So H yes. index depends on the citation as well as a number of publications. Yes. H index has no connectivity with impact. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My doubt is uh, when the paper is ready, when the article is ready, can it be sent to different journals at the same time? It is ethically wrong. When you submit a paper to a journal, we give a declaration that I have not submitted these results to any other journals. So you cannot do that. You can publish, you can send your article to only one journal. And okay. when the journal refuses to publish, or you can withdraw the paper, you say to the journal that I'm withdrawing the paper, then you can send to another journal. Okay, sir. If you Thank send you for the session. simultaneously, it is highly unethical. I know okay. some, some people do that. And uh, they have trouble also. So never and ever do that. Some okay. one journal, then if they reject, I suggest you revise it and then submit to another journal. If they take a long time, if you're not happy with the journal, you will draw it. Then you submit to another journal. Very good question. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. If there are no more questions, shall we wind up? Uh, sir, one uh, quick question, uh, just a supplementary question. I'm Godwin. Can I, sir? I know you are quite you know, exhausted. No, 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 no. You can definitely ask. Okay. Please, please, I will be very excited if you. <laughs> okay. Uh, sir, you know, at times what happens is, you know, in case of, you know, this UGC care list, one of the issues that come up is, okay, I have published in, say, in 2020, but I find that in a later year that, you know, get delisted from that particular uh, yeah. you know, uh, care. This is, a, this so, is a very big problem. My advice to all my colleagues, friends, please publish in high impact journal. Dear Dr. Colvin, if you publish in RSE journal or... Uh, uh, American Chemical Society Journal 
or top Elsevier gametes. It never happened. You know what happens to this issue? The lot of predatory gamel, they somehow influence the, the UGC experts and they try to get in the list. After a few years, a lot of complaints came up. They found that the gametes are predatory. So my advice again to all my colleagues, students, scholars, please publish in high standard journals, top journals. Right. Very, this is a very important question you asked. When I sit for a selection board, you know, I have this problem. One professor told me, Dr. Thomas, my when I sent the paper, it was listed by UGC. Now it's not there. I told him, this is my personal advice. Please publish only in good journals. If you publish in good journals, dear colleagues, it will never happen. I can guarantee you. I'm also associated with UGC. I'm married to you. Thank you, sir. That's my advice to Dr. Gorbhi. It's a good question, Gorbhi. This, this is a frequent problem. The selection board, I face this very frequently. Sir, I have one question. I'm Dr. Shweta from uh, Delhi. Uh, yes. I would like to know uh, that uh, what is the, uh, I mean, sometimes we see that when we uh, go for a journal and we find a journal where we want to get published and we send the paper over there, it is mentioned that this particular journal is uh, peer reviewed, double blind peer reviewed. So if some journal is double blind peer reviewed or peer reviewed, is it uh, good to get one answer published in that journal or should we not consider that and cross check it or I mean, what precautions need we take? Would you please tell me something about it? Uh, you know, I would always recommend if it is a peer reviewed, that's the best peer reviewed journalist. Uh, you know, many, any journalist is a very active peer review process. Go for that. So if the journal is not listed in UGC, but it is peer reviewed, so is it equally good? UGC now made a statement, probably you might know that they also made it peer reviewed. They also made it now peer reviewed. Okay, okay, I did not uh, see that. Yeah, they have made recently, uh, if it is peer reviewed, recently they made some changes. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Yes. But I would say, I would say, you see, when I go for a selection board, I always look at the quality of publication. So actually, I am from arts background. I am from English literature background. Yeah. So uh, in our journals, in fact, factor, yes, we can see that. But scientific publications is a little bit different thing. And for our literature, literary publications are a little different. So we are uh, only having the option of UGC listed or peer reviewed and then uh, otherwise some higher journal of some good publication house so this is the only option that we have and then when i when i look for good journals uh, who are uh, in the scopus list then again it is a hard time for me to find a good journal from the scopus list because every journal has their own different style of uh, you know getting the taking the submissions the pattern the format and the guidelines yeah, that is see, yes. publication is a difficult task Every journal, uh, every journal has their own style. Yes, sir. Yeah. But that is there in science also. See, uh, suppose if your paper is rejected from American Chemical Society, and then if you want to submit to Royal Society, you put everything has to be changed. There's yes, yes, sir. Then we have to change uh, everything. There. Right. See, uh, that's why publication uh, is a difficult <laughs> process. You know, you have to change the style. If the style is not correct, they will immediately reject. You know, you cannot have uh, the uh, large number of figures. They will give you the number of pixels. So they're all very complicated. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it is the number of words that they reject you upon. Exactly. It is exactly. You see, my paper has been rejected because of the number of words were higher than my student and I sat together and then reduced the number. And some uh, some figures were bigger in size. They yes. said no. They reduced, they reduced it. So this is, again, this is again a, I mean, a difficult task. The student and supervisor has to do a lot of uh, homework uh, to have good publication. I so that so that means also I, others are also sailing in the same boat like I am. Yeah, we all have you know, yeah. same problem. Yes, sir. same problem. 
The double blind review is excellent. You know, you see, I get a lot of papers double blind review where you know the reviewer and the uh, other uh, identities are conceived. This again a good process. You know, you see, double blind has a very good advantage. You see, some people, some people are, uh, some reviewers are not very, I would say, uh, not very transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, they are uh, they are not very. Uh, impartial you know they say if some paper has come from uh, a terrible country they review the paper with that attitude that is why some journals have started the process of uh, uh, double blind review mm -hmm. the reviewer and the other identities are sort of uh, conceived mm -hmm. you know that is a good that's a good process all right sir yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, you know, the issues uh, I mean faced by you are all common to science as well mm -hmm. as social science people. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you. There is another question in the comment box. So, in continuation with the care list journal being de recognized, Pardon? Is it possible, uh, in continuation with the care list journal being re de recognized, yeah. Can't the year of publication be considered for any promotions? There is a question in the comment box. Theoretically, people do that. Theoretically, they claim that you might get a support from the court of law also. It could be possible. That is true. But my advice, my personal advice is, uh, you know, if you select good journals, this will never happen. Sure, sir. Yeah, you see, personally, I always try to publish in all society, ACS, Scopus top journals. I never face this problem. I never look at the care list. You know, all these journals, see, look at all the ROC journals are in the in the sorry, EDC care list. All the ACS are in the UDC care list. So all the top journals in the world are listed in the UDC. But there are journals, you know, published by different parts of the world. They're all very poor quality. Somehow they managed to get in. A lot of complaints come, then they were uh, they are removed. So please, uh, my suggestion is please submit your article to very good journals, whether it is science or social science, whatever be your subject. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, I am Basaraj Mali Patil. Eh? Yes. Uh, sir, I am working as a college librarian, sir. Right. Uh, sir, in Karnataka State, sir. Very good. Uh, sir, I am very happy about your uh, lecture and uh, uh, very uh, informative session, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, sir my, my one uh, doubt is there, sir. Uh, in, in India, uh, more than 40,000 colleges, sir. Yeah. And uh, more than 1,000 universities. Yeah. Uh, all uh, professors and assistant uh, professors, librarians, all uh, UGC salary taking faculties are uh, required for uh, uh, their papers published in UGC care list, sir. Exactly. It, is, uh, it is mandatory by UGC, sir. Yeah. But, uh, but Indian journals are uh, not properly working, sir. Uh, example, uh, in uh, one year, uh, the one or two issues are there, sir, only. Right. Right. And uh, when uh, we uh, send the papers to the journals, uh, they are not uh, reply, sir, yes or no. Uh, they, they are messaging, sir, uh, we, wait, we wait for one year, two year, uh, more papers are queue. This, uh, this type of messages I have received, sir. Uh, sir, this is, this is the uh, problem of uh, publication in India, sir. Eh? <laughs> Any uh, suggestion <laughs> for me, sir, <laughs> your side, sir? My suggestion is, yes, was, sir. this was very prominent in many years ago. I remember yes, I was a student at the Indian Institute of Technology. Yes, and sir. Problems. But now, this problem of delay yes, is slowly vanishing. Because people use digital technology. I'll tell you, every month I get something like 10 papers. 10 papers to me. And uh, I take the help of my scholars, postdocs. We sit together and review the paper quickly. Yes, I can keep a paper more than a more than two weeks. Immediately they will withdraw the paper. Uh, sir. Uh, sir, which journal, sir? Which? Uh, I usually review, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, papers of yes, 
papers yes, of chemistry, polymer yes, science, sir. biochemistry, uh, yes. some of the medical journals I review. Yes, but now the editors are giving me a lot of pressure. I yes, cannot sir. accept a paper more than two weeks, my dear colleagues. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Sir. If I give more than two weeks, immediately yes. withdraw the paper. Yes, so sir, yes, sir. To, uh, catch up. Because I'm really interested to read. Uh, no, 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 sir. Only you are uh, prompt and uh, uh, hardworking and uh, give the uh, recent yeah. solutions, sir. But other people are not doing that, sir. No, no, no. General editors <laughs> are very strict. Uh. Editors are very strict now. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I deal with many editors. There are so many editors. They are all very strict. Uh, in my in my experience of uh, publications, sir. Eh? Yeah. Uh, the only Tamil Nadu state is the only uh, first and uh, hard working sir in publication work sir. Right. My my knowledge and experience sir. In uh, Tamil Nadu. Ah uh, yes sir, Tamil Nadu state only sir in in in, in India sir. Yeah, Tamil Nadu <laughs> has a special uh, yes, sir. characteristics. Probably you yes, must sir. you must have seen that. Look at their yes, growth sir. enrollment ratio. Yes sir. Are pretty high. Tamil yes sir. Uh, example sir. Uh, example sir. My uh, my field is library science sir. Uh. Yeah. In uh, I taking my my field, uh, the ninety nine percentage of the librarians and research scholars are uh, uh, good working and uh, good uh, uh, literature due to the library science only Tamil Nadu state, sir. Yeah, Tamil Nadu has yeah. a lot of advantages. Tamil Nadu has a huge yeah. number of institutions. Yes, sir. You, you stay, take the uh, look at the colleges. Yes, NAR sir. ranking. Tamil yes, Nadu has a maximum number of colleges. Yes, sir. In NAR ranking within hundred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has only twenty colleges. Are um, colleges. most of the colleges are autonomous, sir. Autonomous, yes. The very important point: large number of autonomous colleges. And yes, sir. Giving sanction autonomous colleges several years ago. Look at Stella Marys. Look yes, at um, uh, uh, Madras Christian College. Yes, sir. So Tamil Nadu is very progressive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In terms of giving autonomy. Yes, sir. That is the that is success of Tamil Nadu. You see, dear colleagues, I used to go for project evaluation. In DST, DBT, ICMR. Ah, sir. I find uh, sometimes 50 projects from Tamil Nadu, and yes, I, sir, I find only four projects from Kerala, and ah, three sir. from or five from uh, Karnataka. Yes, sir. So Tamil Nadu is. You are correct. Yes, sir. What is ahead of Karnataka and Kerala? Ahead of many states. Because uh, sir, uh, uh, only Gram Panchayat uh, library also very developed and. Uh, Recent technology adopted, sir. Exactly, exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. University is another, another, another thing, sir. But uh, gram panchayat, uh, village libraries are also developed, sir. Yes, but yes, sir. You know, Kerala, I tell you, Kerala, we are also very strong in libraries, local libraries, village libraries. Kerala has made remarkable progress. That is why Kerala has very high level of, um, you know, uh, I mean, um, capability to write and read. You know, Kerala has a very good library network, thanks to government of heaven. But Kerala should also start a large number of autonomous colleges, new institutions. Yes, sir. And, uh, the government of Kerala is doing a wonderful work now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, education. You see, my university is going to get a translation center from the government of Kerala. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you get you. a science park from the government of yes. Kerala. I think government of Kerala is giving a lot of trust for education. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, probably the best in the country now, high education. In, yes, sir. In, in terms of giving importance, Kerala is number one. Yes, Look sir. At yes, the startup. Sir. Kerala is number one now. Sir, uh, Kerala state uh, gives the contribution to only medical field, sir, not uh, engineering and other fields, sir. Yeah. <laughs> medical, uh, they give the, so many persons to serve the country, serve the world, sir. That is, that is there, but the medical research, uh, we are not contributing much. Medical research, we are very poor, Kerala. We are yes, able sir. to train very good medical doctors. Yes, sir. But not in terms of scientific publication. Uh. Medical research is in infancy in Kerala stage. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. But yes, sir. we are able to train good doctors. It's Dr. not only that. Because I have, I have gone to medic many medical colleges. Yes, sir. Kerala medical colleges are much ahead of any medical college in the country. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt because of uh, because of uh, British and uh, Christian uh, community give the importance, sir. Yeah, that, that time, sir. Be, that could be partly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of infrastructure development in uh, yes. institutions in Kerala. 
ओके ओके सर यस यस थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी गुड कमेंट्स आई हैव गॉट आई एम निशा सर अगेन आई हैव गॉट वन मोर डाउट सर Yes. Uh, sir, I had contacted few of the editors. One of them said that they can publish in the online, uh, but uh, the original publication could only be made possible only after six months. So, will the universities particularly accept online publication for uh, presenting the synopsis? Definitely. Why not? You see, now the uh, all the journals are some of the journals are completely online, open access okay, online. Sir. Some of the journals are hybrid mode. both online and offline see the journal and the editor i'll say their journal you can look at the my nano structures and nano objects it's a hybrid mode if you want to make your publication online you have to pay some money yes sir if it is offline then no money okay. so you know it varies so you have to deal with the editor and you know i mean uh, online publication accepted for promotion there is no problem To, uh, for the synopsis presentation, it would be okay, no sir? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, sir, I am Dr. Mithul Sarkar from NIET Greater Noida. Sir, yes. actually, I am facing one problem, so I thought uh, you'll be able to uh, guide me. Actually, yes. I sent one paper to one of the Scopus Index journals, yeah. and I received an acknowledgement uh, from them. and then i waited for almost 7 to 8 months yeah. and then i gave them a call and once i called them they said that it will get published in the december issue but i have not received any email from them like in spite of my repeated request uh, they have not sent any email of confirmation uh, only verbally they have told me that it will get published in the december issue yes, so what shall i do so i withdraw the paper you know my question is see Is the journal has a good standing? Sorry, sir. Is the journal has a good international standing? Yes, sir. It is. It's a good journal. What is the impact factor? Uh, sir, it's IOP. It's a Scopus indexed. IOP. IOP. Yes, sir. IOP journals are pretty good. Uh, there could be. I'll tell you. Sometimes these journals. There are lots of journals coming up now. IOP journals are more or less good. the problem with journals now they may not get enough number of publications to cover an issue this is again a problem now all the publishing companies are very aggressive to get lots of articles from uh, from uh, from uh, others again it become more of uh, you know of uh, of a commercial business now so sometimes some yeah, some publication some journals they may not get the enough number of publications to come out with an issue So every issue they should have at least ten, fifteen publications. So this okay. is again a problem sometimes. This is again a problem okay. sometimes. For your promotion, what you can do is if you get an acceptance from the journal, then we will accept it. That's enough. But sir, they have not given any written communication. Like verbally, they are telling me okay that it will get uh, published in the month of December. But I don't have any solid proof. Like what shall I do? Yeah, if you get an acceptance letter, if you get mm -hmm. an acceptance. Uh, for the journal that your journal has been accepted publication, then we will definitely consider for your promotion. Definitely, okay. yes, you can show your acceptance letter. Sir, yeah. I requested them to send me uh, uh, the acceptance letter, but till now I have not received any acceptance letter. It just yeah. verbally over phone they are telling me. Yeah, yeah, you should ask them for an acceptance letter, and then you can show that for your promotion, submission of thesis, synopsis, no issue there. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everybody has had a very successful interactive session. Shall we move on to the winding up session? Yes. Thank you so much. very excited thank you sir thank you sir thank for you. sharing your expertise and interacting with us among the busy schedule i take this opportunity to thank professor sabu thomas honorable vice chancellor mahatma gandhi university for inspiring us 
with your high sparkling words not only on publishing but also on patenting and startup and contribute to new knowledge and developments we are coming to the concluding session of the program gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues but the parent of all the others it's my privilege to thank each one of you initially we started with 163 participants and till the end we could maintain that number even in this adverse climate in the southern part of india which shows the keen interest in the area and the charm of the speaker and the most distinguished chief guest of the day dr sab thomas hat thanks on behalf of the organizers lower and ed bk college amalagiri and assumption college changanacheri let me thank principals of assumption college dr anita jones and dr agnes jones principal bk college amalagiri without whose support the program would have happened father tinchu librarian of archbishop kavagat central library for the efforts and also welcoming the gathering above all let me thank the team lore and ed research associates jindo and sandhya for putting in all the efforts of planning organizing and executing the program dear participants thank you for being here and turning it in huge numbers i wish you a well motivated 12 days ahead for learning thank you ananda thank you sir thank you so much good night to all of you thank you sir looking forward to seeing you sometime wish sure, you all the best and always publish in high impact journals thank you good night sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you thank you bye bye